Hi, Thomas Hyman here, founder and CEO of Realty Partners. Today's message is for all of those wannabe successful, high-end, top-notch real estate agent out there. Let me ask you this. Why did you get into the business in the first place? Um, you know, I talk to real estate agents all the time. Everyone tells me, I want to make six figures a year. I want to make a couple hundred thousand dollars this year. I want to get more listings. I want to do this. I want to do that. And uh, when I talk to them and give them some ideas and some strategies on specifically what needs to be done, they just flake out. They're not doing it. And um, I look at the kind of marketing they do, the kind of self-promotion they do, how they argue the limitations. You know, when you suggest to someone, okay, here is what the top people in the industry are doing, and they're just not doing it, and arguing with you why, for some reason, they don't feel comfortable doing X, Y, Z, and um, to me, it just means that, you know what, you're not serious about your business. Here's the truth. If you want to make a couple of hundred grand in real estate, and number one, A, you're willing to treat it as a business, as a serious business. That means making a budget, making an investment, putting your butt on the line, and working your ass off. Number two, following proven strategies. Real estate success is not some mystery. No matter what level you want to play at and succeed at, there are plenty of agents in other markets that you can model, that you can learn from. The blueprint is out there. And uh, so you have to be willing to follow proven strategies without questioning it. You know, if somebody that's doing two, three hundred thousand dollars a year in real estate is telling you who's struggling right now and maybe made thirty or forty thousand dollars last year in real estate, here are two, three things that you have to do and you don't do them, then shame on you. I mean, unless you're more successful than that other person, why would you even argue? And number three, most importantly, you have to be able to work on yourself, grow as a person, work on your level of professionalism, work on your mental game, write out goals, read those goals daily, write them out daily, close your eyes and visualize yourself in the place you want to be every single day, daily. The mental game is so important. I don't know of anyone that has ever succeeded at any high scale that is not investing in themselves, constantly growing, constantly learning, going to conferences, seminars, investing in, in themselves, and uh, again, following proven strategies for success. You know, I decided a while back that I am not going to work as an agent in the field anymore. And the reason I did that is because I have achieved a certain level of success in my life where I decided what I want to do and not do in my life. And one of the key things that's most important to me is having flexibility, time freedom, and physical freedom to do my work as I choose, whether I'm here, whether I'm in Europe, whether I'm traveling, whether I'm working from my home, and uh, spending time with my family and friends and doing things that are most important to me. So I set up my life so I can do my work from uh, you know 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then again in the evening or somewhere in the middle. And as a real estate practitioner, if you're out in the field, and I don't care whether you're working by yourself or you have a team, that's just not going to work. You need to be available seven days a week. That's part of the gig. And uh, I'm just not willing to do that. And I don't have to do it. Which brings me back to my first question. You know, why did you get into the business in the first place? 
Why are you still in it? You know, a lot of people that I'm talking to want to make money, but uh, they fail to realize that this is a business where you don't have any guaranteed income. You know, if you don't apply yourself properly, you're not going to make anything. You're going to starve to death. You won't be able to pay your dues next year because your credit card is maxed out. You don't have a place to put your dues. And, uh, you know, you're better off going to work at Walmart, seriously. Or, you know, go to Craigslist, find some gigs. Or, you know, go on to uh, Monster and find something, anything. Go to Elance and Freelance. So uh, it's really, really important. You know, somebody said a long time ago, if your why is big enough, then the how will fall into place. And uh, I see myself as a coach and mentor today. I do a lot of trainings. I do a lot of presentations. I do a lot of webinars. And, uh, you know, as a coach or a mentor, it's not my job to do someone's work for them. When an agent comes to work for me, I want to see them succeed at the very highest level. And I know what it takes to get from A to B. You know, as a rookie, I sought out the top people in the industry. And uh, in my first full year in the business, I did almost 100 transactions, which was completely unheard of. It wasn't easy. I had to work my butt off and I built a business. By the end of that time, I had two full-time assistants, I had three buyer agents, I had a bunch of other people working on my team, and, uh, and I was kicking butt. And I didn't get there overnight, I built it in stages, but I treated it as a business. And, uh, and so I know what it takes, and I'm in touch with some of the most successful real estate agents in the industry. And there's tons and tons of training material out there, online, on Facebook, on YouTube, you name it. And uh, I see what their strategies are and I try to impart those strategies uh, on our agents or even agents that aren't part of my company that uh, I happen to communicate with. And, um, you know, if you're interested in growing your business, I'll be happy to provide some coaching and mentoring, but you need to really truly want it and you have to be able to follow these simple three things that are outlined before. Uh, if you're not willing to do that, then uh, unfortunately, you're just going to stay where you're at. You know, the definition of insanity is expecting a different result while doing the same thing or doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Same thing. Now, if you are going to do what you've been doing in your business the last one, two, five, 10, 15 years, however long you've been in the business, if that's what you continue to do, you will continue to get the same results. So how do you get started? If you're an agent and you really want to turn that ship around, um, what would I do right now if I were an agent, if I were to say, you know what, I'm going to make a commitment that I will make at least, and I'm not talking about gross, I'm talking about net, I'm going to make at least $150,000 a year, which is roughly $12,000, $13,000 per month. I'm going to work about 2,500 hours a year. So at $150,000 net income a year, that means my time is worth $60 an hour minimum. Every single minute that I work has to be worth at least $60 an hour to me. That's the mindset I'm going to get myself into. And then I'm going to seek out agents that are doing what I want to do. Who has achieved at that level and who's doing it right now and what are they doing? I would look them up in other markets and I would pick their brain. I would fly out to visit them if I had to. And then I would put together a game plan. I would put together a budget. What do I need to put, invest in my business to go from here to there? And, uh, you know, truth to be told, if you wanted to build any other business, you would have to create a budget and a game plan and uh, make an investment, you know, in your facilities, in your equipment, in your marketing, you got to get the word out. And um, if, you, if you don't do that in real estate, you're not going to get the result. I mean, imagine open a restaurant. Let's say your cousin Vinny opens the store, owns the storefront and says, you know what, 
you can have the rent you know for free for the next six months and there was a restaurant in here before they went out of business they had crappy food but they left all the tables and everything behind and so you go in there and you open your restaurant and you don't have any money to invest in marketing you really only got two or three things on your menu because you don't have any money to invest in in food so that you can actually have an inventory of, uh, of supplies. You're only going to have one kind of beer and one kind of wine because all you can afford is to you know, buy a six pack of Bud and a couple of cheap bottles of wine and then you're going to start. How successful do you think you're going to be? And uh, you know, the same thing unfortunately holds true for real estate. So you need to make a budget, you need to make a plan. And, um, you know, my rule of thumb is that you need to invest 25 to 30% in marketing and into, into growing your business, you know. Um, so if you want to make $150,000, seriously, you're going to have to uh, invest at least $50,000 in marketing and growing your business and getting the word out which means you got to bring in then $200,000 in gross commissions, maybe more if you em employ other people. But at that level, I really don't think you need to employ other people, maybe one assistant. Um, but you got to put it out there. If you're not willing to do that, then you need to scale back and have a plan. Okay, you know what, this, this year, I'm going to make 75 grand and I'm going to invest, let's say, you know, $1,500 a month to make that happen. And every commission check that I get, I'm going to take 40% or 50% and put it into a marketing account, into a separate business account to snowball things and grow things so that next year I'll be able to get to that $150,000. Um, the second thing I would do is really look at personal development and success education. You know, you've heard the 80-20 rule, the Pareto Principle. Um, which says that 80% uh, of your results are produced by 20% of your efforts. Um, that is so true in many, many other um, ways or facets. I really believe in a uh, triad of success. And I actually registered a couple of domain names several years ago and I've been working on, on a training course and a book that hopefully one day I'll uh, decide to get out. But when you look at achieving success in any endeavor, there are three parts to the formula. You need to have the right strategy, okay, exactly what are you going to do and how. Um, you need to have the proper resources so you can do them. But most importantly, you need to have the right psychology. And uh, I would like to say that uh, in success, it's pretty, pretty, it's probably 80% psychology and 20% activity and uh, resources, etc. You know, uh, when you have the right psychology, you become resourceful and resourcefulness is much, much more important than resources. Let's say you don't have the resources, but you can find someone that does. That's called resourcefulness. You can come up with a way. And there always is a way. Resources are never the issue. It's never lack of resources. It almost always is a lack of resourcefulness. So your psychology is incredibly important. I don't know if you've watched The Secret. I don't know if you've ever been to uh, any uh, personal development seminars. Uh, you know, Anthony Robbins, for example, comes to mind. But you really want to invest in yourself and invest in that. And if you cannot afford to go and invest a thousand dollars to go see Tony Robbins right now, then uh, do invest 20, 30 bucks, get a couple of good audiobooks, and uh, start applying what you learn. You know, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is a must. And if you've read it, read it again and read it again. And are you actually doing it? Did you write up your ultimate success formula? Are you reading it every day? in the morning and every day at night before you go to bed? Are you actually working the strategies? Are you following the success formula? Are you following the, the, the secret sauce, so to speak, which is ab absolutely works, okay? So you have to work on your psychology because if your belief system says that you're not good enough 
to um, make a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars, you're never going to make it. And um, and I see that so apparent when I talk to agents and they argue their limitations. You know why they wouldn't charge seven percent and maybe seven percent plus five hundred dollars on a listing. I'm never going to get it. The seller's going to do this. The seller's going to do that. That is all BS. It's a belief system. Um, why you wouldn't charge a buyer? I mean, why would you work with a buyer without having an executed buyer agency agreement and a retainer in hand so you know they're serious and committed to you? Even if you don't want to do the retainer, at least have a fully executed buyer agency agreement that's solid. Why, would, why wouldn't you do it? And again, the reasons are the belief system. Why don't you follow up on your leads the way you really should? within minutes of them registering and then over and over and over again. If you have to call them 10 times the first day until you actually have them live on the phone and then actually establish rapport, find out a few things about them, find out about their needs and then follow up. Call them every single month or every single week or every two weeks depending on how far they're out. Not just sending an email but actually calling them. And if you don't get an answer, call again and call again and call again and call again until you actually connected with them. Uh, why aren't you do that? Well, I get the stories and the stories are all BS. They're all based in the belief system that, well, I don't want to upset them. I don't want to be too pushy. I don't want to do this. I want to do that. I mean, seriously, if you want to make a six figure income, that lead is only any good if they're going to do business with you. There's no such thing as being too pushy because if you're too pushy and they're not interested and they go away, Okay, you're not going to waste your time with them anymore. But if you're not following up and most sales are made after the fifth no, then um, the lead is worthless. And um, most agents that are doing lead generation, their problem is not, having, is not not having enough leads. It's not properly following up. So again, there are strategies. If you Google real estate lead follow up, or better yet, go to YouTube and just search for training videos. There are all sorts of team leaders that have training videos on how to do your first call, how to do your follow-up call, etc., etc., etc. So the information is out there and, uh, and you need to learn it. But you need to have a, a belief system that you are able to do, that you can do it and that you deserve it. If you don't have that squared away, then nothing's going to happen. And so that gets me back to my first question. Why are you in the business? Why are you still in the business? And what are you looking to get out of it? And whatever your answer is in terms of what you want to get out of it, why is that a must? You know, Tony Robbins said people never get their shoulds. They always get their musts. And if you're only making dollar X right now, it's because that is your comfort zone. That is your must. Um, so if you want more, you need to come up with a reason for it. So if you're making right now 50 grand a year and you're surviving and getting by and you would like to make $200,000 a year, why is that a must, not just a nice to have? So I know I've rambled on for quite a while. I'm here at a house that we just finished rehabbing and um, I'm uh, about to show it to prospective tenants. Um, since I'm not charging a salary at all at Realty Partners, my only reward at Realty Partners is the, the reward of profit shares as the company becomes more successful. So I'm in the same boat with the agents. Uh, the reason I can do that is because my wife and I have built an investment of portfolio of properties, rental properties that are paying us a residual income and affording us the ability to design our life the way we want to. When I want to work 100 hours a week, I can. If I only want to work five hours a week, I can. And I wish for you to have the same ability. So, you know, I am not anything special. I just uh, decided to do two things. Number one, why I wanted to achieve a certain level of success. And number two, finding people that have achieved what I want to achieve and modeling them when you do the same things and you think the same way, most importantly, you will reap similar results. Thanks so much for hanging in there. 
uh, Thomas Hyman, founder and CEO of Realty Partners. And I'd love to work with you and help you take your business to the next level if you really are looking to do that.